Welcome to episode five of the Creative Forge podcast. Creative Forge is an educational organization dedicated to offering instructional media focused on how to prepare for work in creative fields and entertainment industries. We engage with experts in fields such as comics, game art, animation, audio, illustration, creative project management, and more to provide diverse views and experiences. On today's podcast, we're interviewing Darnell Johnson. Uh, Darnell is an illustrator, character designer, and visual development artist for animation, uh, and he's actually currently freelance. Yeah, Darnell has been freelance for the better part of this year, and prior to that, he was working with us as a concept artist and illustrator, and just uh, just a super prolific artist, and has a ton of great advice for anybody who wants to be an artist and anybody who wants to break into the industry and for people who might be thinking about going to art school now. And of course, he has a lot to say about making the pretty monumental leap from working a steady job at a studio to working freelance and trying to find clients on your own and build your own personal brand. Rock on, yeah. That personal brand part is a is a big part of what he's trying to do, and he had some he had some to say about that. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah, no, actually, a lot of what he had to say was things that I hadn't even thought of or heard someone who actually put them into action reflecting on. It was, it, was, it was really interesting. Yeah, and he's actually got some really interesting things to say about about networking online, and they were things that, honestly, I'm, I'm sure other people are doing, but I just haven't heard that advice before, and it seems to be working for him. Yeah. All right, so uh, that's enough of us. Let's uh, get to the interview. What job title are you giving yourself? My job title? Um, illustrator, visual development artist, I would say. Freelance. Freelance, yeah. Pretty much. Okay. And I think what we were talking about at the restaurant was the transition from you going from a studio job that you were at for how long? Um, about six years. Six years. Yeah. And taking that mighty leap into yeah. freelance. That is, a, that is a frightening leap that a lot of us have thought about <laughs> and most of us have not taken. Yeah. 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 And I think that's something that an awful lot of artists are interested in. It's one of the reasons that I wanted you on the show, aside from the fact that I think of you as an incredible artist. Appreciate it. Uh, <laughs> just truth, man. Just truth. Um, so it was definitely a loss <sighs> when when you when you left the studio for sure. Nobody was happy to see you go. That, no, that is definitely that not. Is the truth. Well, I did enjoy the company, so I like the the people and the, just the environment of hanging out with you guys. Mm-hmm. So that's what I really enjoyed the most. It's just it was time for me to go. I like got gotcha. I, I wanted to do different things. I wanted to explore more, and I felt that. What I was doing there would just, it was boxed in with what you were capable of doing with casino games. Right. Mm-hmm. So making that decision took a lot of faith, trusting that, you know, because I'm, I'm a Christian and I believe that God is going to take care of me. So I just really just had to take that step of faith because it is hard. I know when I first uh, was thinking about it, I was like, hmm, how am I going to, create enough income or bring in enough income to be able to support my um, family, you know, be unmarried. So we're thinking about having kids. So that was all coming up, a lot of anxiety um, I was dealing with. But I knew that I would free up so much um, if I left. So mm-hmm. Free up? Free, um, what do you mean free up? Um, Just like be free to do a lot more creative things. Um, I wanted to pursue the animation industry. Um, and do a lot of my own stories, like try to get some shorts made, um, you know, work on working animation mainly, um, or features or TV shows. Mm -hmm. So that was my main focus. Um, just being able to tell stories because that's what I wanted to do with my art and being at the studio. It was more of just me making beautiful things. Right. It's it's <laughs> yeah. realism. It's uh, yeah. or uh, well, more realistic anyway. And I know that your personal style is a lot bolder and a lot yeah. more animated, um, a lot more exaggerated and cartoony. Mm-hmm. And um, and I I saw you struggling with that. And you're not the only one. I mean, other yeah. people struggle with the style mm-hmm. question. And I know that you struggled with that for for quite a while Mm -hmm. uh, because it it is a good job there and and it is a good place to work. Mm -hmm. And um, and it's but it's not for everybody. Yeah. And And um, sounds like just you just get to the point that, you know, a lot of people get to where it's just you just needed to to do 
more to to, to feel like you were growing, I guess, as an yeah. artist. And, yeah. mm-hmm. and it is true that if you if you're working in um in a job in a steady thing, you you you're doing what the job requires. You you don't you know if you're happy with that, great. But if you want to do something outside of that, it can be hard to pursue that because you you know you have a limited personal time. Yeah, that that was a frustration of mine. Um, just getting off from work, having you know, spending time with my wife, and then trying to find the energy to do my own personal stuff. That was really frustrating when I'm like, okay, now I have this time, but I'm so tired I can't really draw my own stuff and I have to go to sleep and I got to get up and go to work the next day. So it was kind of like, uh, I'm working on this, but in my head I'm thinking about other stuff I'm going to want to be working on. So it was, it was a struggle. Right. Yeah. How long were you seriously thinking about making the break to freelance before you actually did make that break? A year, I would say. Wow. Yeah, and I'm I'm assuming there was a lot of conversation with your wife. Yeah, what was the consensus? Just to go in prayer. I did a lot of that. Um, I did a lot of is this something that God's leading me to do? And eventually, the funny thing about it, like I got my answer that I needed, but I was still hesitant. So my wife just came out and just was like, "Just do it tomorrow. Put in your two weeks' notice tomorrow." So I was wow. like, "Wow, all right." Oh, okay. it was really that that sudden that you're I'm like like you clearly you knew you were going to but yeah yeah but it wasn't planned out like you know months in advance on this day I'm gonna leave it was just yeah two, I, weeks, two weeks from today I had like or tomorrow I had a a time that I said I was gonna leave but as that time was getting closer I kept pushing it back okay. and back because I was like eh, stuff is not where I wanted it to be like financially or you know just me having something kind of lined up in the works before I left. So she saw the back and forth I was doing, and she was just like, just put in your two weeks notice, like, tomorrow. Like, type it up, send it in tomorrow. And I, I, like I said, I already knew the answer because, you know, just from praying and asking God to just, like, direct me. Like, he led me to go ahead and, you know, it was time for me to step down. But, like I said, being just, being hesitant. And my wife was just like. Sometimes you need a little bit of a push. Yeah, my wife was just like, hey, like, you're going back and forth. Just putting your two weeks notice. So I went ahead and did that. So did you actually have, um, because I know you're doing freelance work and you were still um, at the studio. Yeah. So did you still have some of that that was, like, already lined up or that was continuing? So you had at least a little bit of something to go on? Or was it just a, no, I'll find something right away? Or. It was kind of, I'll like just work on building my company because I had a company that I started the year before I left. And then also a little bit of trying to get something lined up. Um, There was a small little animation studio that I was talking to that's in Virginia. And um, I was talking to the CEOs directly because I had received some advice Hmm. to network a lot more on LinkedIn which I started networking on. And instead of, I guess my plan was with that was, okay, I can talk to people who are in the positions that I want to get, like background design, character design, or I can go directly to like CEOs and owners of these studios and just like, hey, strike a conversation, build relationships and let them know, let them know what I do. And that's how, I got in um, communication with the first studio that has become kind of like a, they've been sending me work consistently. Um, They're called Pixel Pirate Studios. And I've been doing like small illustration jobs with them, toy design gigs. Um, I did like background design work for like a animated commercial. So I've so, built that relationship. So you just went you just went right to the top. You're, yes. You're, forget I, these people. That was just, my point. The guy was actually going to have to hire you. Yeah. Or the person who's going to have to hire you. Yeah. That's, that's great. Wait, did you say toy design? Yeah, I did some toy design. What? what <laughs> okay, that sounds really interesting. How, yeah. What, 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 what sort of thing? Like, did you make, like, uh, you know, turnarounds or that kind of thing? Or? Yeah, I did um, turnarounds. I did um, orthographic views of, um, like, a stuffed animal. Um, so I did front, side, 
And has this been, have you seen this out of the market? Has it been not made? Yet. Not yet. Okay. But not it yet. is going to be made? Or? It's going to be made. Oh, I'm um, excited. Because I, I just got called back to do a puppet design of the stuffed animal that I did. So a, a, a what a design? Puppet. Puppet like a design. Puppet. Yeah. So, oh, okay. wow. It's, it's interesting. Like I, I, I learned and the awesome thing about it, it wasn't like I was thrown into it. Um, and okay, you got to figure it out. It's like he saw the potential in me being able to design toys. Mm-hmm. So it was like, all right, well, do some turnarounds for me. And he just tweaked it. Like he told me, well, you just need to fix this, push this over a little bit more. And he was helping me like with toy design, you have to have their arms out. Mm-hmm. Because when they model it or when they're manufacturing it, they need it a certain way to know that this is three dimensional, you know, things like that. So it was he was helping me out and teaching me at the same time as me actually getting work. So I learned a new skill set that I can Oh, that's amazing. And it's it, that sounds that's really, really similar cool. to what uh what we do for turnarounds for the three D artist at work mm-hmm. uh, for the game industry. Well yeah, what you just described, of course anyone listening to this can't see you, but uh you just basically did a T pose. With the, you know, the arms straight yeah. up to the side and and all that. And that's that's because, uh, like in 3D, if you're going to bend someone, you want them to start in the most neutral position possible. Otherwise, mm-hmm. you're limiting their range of motion. So yeah. it's, it's, it's interesting that that also applies to, to manufacturing toy. toys. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a lot of similar skill sets, I would say. So I had a, I had a question that you kind of answered, and, and that is, uh, you said that the CEO that you were dealing with over at... Um, Pixel Pirates? Yeah, Pixel Pirates. Did he he was actually gracious enough to spend time with you and kind of help you understand what they needed. Was it him who was um who was actually communicating with you directly or did he have somebody else talking to you as well or It was him um directly cuz um it's a pretty small studio. Mm-hmm. Um and he's an artist as as, as well. Uh-huh. So um he was just pretty much giving me pointers as I worked on different projects for them. So it's been a, a great experience. Rock on. Yeah. Rock on. And and you said that you reached out to him directly. Was it on LinkedIn? It was on LinkedIn. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And how did you find Pixel Pirates in the first place? Um, my random search of like just <laughs> small animation studios. And I just and you went just to the site, did my research. Link. Yeah. And I I try to start off not just like, oh, this is my work, this is what I do, because I've learned now um to build a relationship. Right. You know, so like I'll start off just talking with them about what they've worked on or, you know, asking them about different projects, you know, in detail, just figuring out what was their process and stuff like that. And then later on, I'll be like, oh, by the way, I do background design. I do character designs. The part that's the hardest for me is getting started. Like, what what was that first message like? Is it? I just I'm trying to imagine because you're not saying hey I'm an artist I'm looking for work so how how did you like how did you start that conversation because for me personally that's the part I agonize over. It's always different Um, because I yeah I I struggle with that too but it does help a lot when you've done your research on a person. Mm -hmm. Um, If you've like just read through their resume or like going on the website and just checked out different um, things they've done. And that's pretty much what I did. I did that, and I would just ask him questions about the shows he's worked on. And from there, he would go into, this is what we did on it. This is what I did on it. That's when I'll see my my entrance right there. And um, I'll let him know that I do background design. This is what I do. Right. And, and these are my skill sets. So If he's spending time to explain things to you, uh, from from some of these questions that you're asking, I would say more than likely he did at least a minimal amount of background research on you to see what you... He already knows what you are and what you're doing. Maybe he's entertaining it because of your very different approach. I, I mean, I, I, yeah. that's kind of a question and a, and a statement at the same time because I, I couldn't... I don't know. I've never even... I mean, I've certainly approached some CEOs myself, but it's it's amazing if you reach out and you're personable... And and you you just give a kind of a human side of it rather than being just pure business. How often somebody even at the top might respond to you? Is that the experience that that you feel like you've had so far? Yeah, uh, um, because they you you have to think about it. They 
get a lot of people just like, hey, I'm looking for work. I'm looking for work. So if you're actually taking the time to find out about them, show that you're actually interested in what they do, that will also reflect how passionate you are about it too because you're looking into something that you both have in common, like animation, for instance. Um, Like you love animation. You're asking them about their influences and then in return they're learning about your influences and why you started doing what you're doing in in art or animation. Very cool. Yeah. So, which is interesting because that's actually kind of what we're doing. <laughs> that's actually literally what we're yeah. doing. <laughs> it's interesting how open people are when you just genuinely are interested in in what they do and not in what they can do for you. For, right. You know, interest in them first. Right. Yeah. So, Darnell, I'm looking at your LinkedIn page right now. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. <laughs> because that's mostly where you've been posting. So when I started trying to prepare for this podcast, of course, I've known you on and off for eight years, nine years. Yeah, seems yeah about something right. like that. Yeah. So we met in school uh, at the Savannah Culture of Art Design. But nonetheless, I wanted to take a look, a closer look at what you've been doing online. And most of it can be found either on Stain LLC. What is the dot com for that? Yeah, stainllc.com. Pretty dot com. Much. Yeah. Okay. And then, uh, of course, you've been very active on LinkedIn as well, which seems to have been your strategy. So I took a look at that, and I see uh, Pixel Pirate Studio. Mm -hmm. I see Age of Learning slash ABC Mouse and Warner Music Group. Um, What can you tell Mm -hmm. me about those clients? Because those seem like some really great clients. Um, And what was your experience with them? Well, the work between those three different clients are totally different. Mm -hmm. So before I get into just what... You know, I did for each one of them. That's the beauty of me freelancing right now. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't get pigeonholed into, like, one area of the industry. I've branched out toy design. I've branched out children's books and animation. So I've just been bouncing around everywhere. Mm -hmm. But as far as the different companies, I think I've told you a little bit already about what I've done with Pixel Pirates. Okay. Um, Age of Learning is like a... A company that they produce like computer programs for the education of kids Mm -hmm. um, pretty much so they have like sight word type animations and stuff like that for their learning database and it's called abc mouse pretty much Mm -hmm. and once again i reached out to the producer of animation directly through linkedin and they didn't necessarily have a freelancing thing set up Oh, really? So she was like, hey, well, we'll give you a try, and we'll see how it works. And I'm going to give you an art test, and you do the art test. I did the art test, and she took it back, and everybody loved it. So she was like, well, we'll start sending you some stuff. So they started sending me props and stuff to revision, to do revisions on. And that started to grow more. They started to send me more and more um, projects to work on. That's how that relationship has started to grow. And and I also try to be intentional in my emails on, you know, just saying thank you for the opportunity and just being, you know, polite in the email. That's another thing that's big, too. If you're just like kind of short with them and also just asking them about their day, you know. Or just being personal again with that because you're building something outside of you just being a person through the the screen or just somebody they're just typing emails to. Right. I can I can so imagine you in this role because I know you as a as a humble personable guy and it, it sounds like uh, that's your approach in business just as much as it is in in personal life and at work. Yeah, well, yeah it, it sort of sounds like you're you're charming your way, your way in and then letting your skill speak for itself. Yeah. Right, Once but in, in, in a very genuine way. And, oh, uh, no, I don't mean like in a, <laughs> not like you're conning your way in. No, I, <laughs> yeah. I use the word charm, you know, purposefully. Right. Um, so, you know, I actually first heard about abcmouse.com mm-hmm. like eight, nine months ago. And, uh, and I saw a full-time position available on LinkedIn, funny yeah. enough. It, it, it's one of those things that got served up to me on LinkedIn. I looked at it and I thought to myself, I'd love to freelance for these people. So I was hoping that maybe they had some freelance opportunities. 
And here you are telling Not me. Not anymore. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> here you are telling me, all you had to do is ask. <laughs> yeah. That's that's pretty much what it came down to for me. Like I've gotten to a point now where it's like, okay, I need to bring in income. Right. So mm-hmm. I'm going to ask. And if they say no, all right, I'll just keep moving on and just keep promoting myself, asking people, letting people know I'm here, mm-hmm. you know, just staying just continue continuous networking pretty much. And there's been many other studios I've reached out to on LinkedIn and I haven't heard back. Mm-hmm. And just, you got, like somebody told me, you just got to keep networking, keep talking to people. And 20 people you may talk to, you may get like one person. But you just got to keep going. Because mm-hmm. either people, they're either busy and they forget about the email you sent them or they just, you know, they just don't have the time. Right, and like if you're consistently talking to them and trying to reach out to them, eventually they'll be like, "All right, well, who's this person?" You know, you mm-hmm. don't want to do it to the point that you're aggravating them. But mm-hmm. and another thing I, I tested out after you know just building relationships with people or just trying to get a connection on LinkedIn, my my stuff is popping up in their feed now. Right. So that right. was another thing I was looking at too. So I was like, okay. Since they're connected to me now, all of my stuff that I post is going to go through their feed. So it may, something may catch their eye mm-hmm. and they'll want to reach out to me. So I'm I'm kind of just coming up with things on the fly. Also finding men- mentors on mm-hmm. LinkedIn as well. Just kind of like, hey, can you give me some pointers here and there? Oh, that's great. So it's it's been good. I think LinkedIn is kind of an underutilized uh, source when you're when you're talking about the artist community, so mm-hmm. it's it's really interesting to hear how you've leveraged LinkedIn to actually not not go out and find a job, but to go out and and help you develop a freelance career and a lifestyle that's more free than than what you felt like you got in a studio and environment. It's it's been a learning experience. Um, a lot of the stuff that I've actually gotten has been through LinkedIn Mm -hmm. Um, because even with Warner Music Group I reached out to someone that's another thing find out if they have a personal project you can get them to open up about it about their project Mm -hmm. and you can help as as like a conversation starter or something to connect over and you can be like hey so can you tell me about your project like be genuine about it don't just like throw it there because they can tell if you're not being genuine so that's what I did that led me into, you know, just talking to him about me stepping out from under the studio I was at and going into freelance full time. And he was like, well, I can pass on somebody that I've done work for and they're looking for me to do some stuff for a book cover, but I don't have the time to. So I can give you their information. Mm-hmm. So and that was Warner Music Group. So mm-hmm. I contacted the person he put me in contact with and the rest was history. Like I got work from them and they've started to use me more. Even when I was mm-hmm. like, well, I just got some work from somebody else and they'll contact me and they'll be like, well, um, do you have time? I'm like, I don't have time right now. They would just be like, well, we'll contact you again when we have something. So mm-hmm. LinkedIn has been like a big instrument for me or a tool for me to use to um, just network with people. Very nice. Is there any other place online that you are using to network other than that? I started to use Twitter. Um, I haven't really received any work through um, Twitter, um, I would say. Um, That's because I haven't really used it the way I've been using LinkedIn. And then Instagram. Mm -hmm. Instagram has been pretty good. It seems like it would be a natural fit. Yeah. I mean, it's it's all visual. That's what Instagram is. Yeah. Uh, I did notice, and I, I want I want uh, for our listeners to know if you're interested in looking up uh, Darnell's work online. If you look up Darnell Johnson, you're going to find uh, his more personal stuff on Instagram. If you look up Stain underscore LLC yeah. on uh, LinkedIn, you're actually going to see a mass of his amazing work. Uh, it's a it's a, that's the place to go and Stain LLC dot com uh, for more character design, background design. Yeah. Are you focusing more on background design right now? It seems kind of that way based on what I've seen online, but I know that your character design is stellar. Appreciate it. I've realized that background design is my strong point. Okay. Um, and I have given a thought to going back into a studio, but more of an animation studio. Right. Um, just to learn the ins and outs. 
build relationships and learn the ins and outs of the pipeline. Mm -hmm. And when I say build relationships, like I, if I'm working at Nickelodeon, I can build relationships with people there, with producers and stuff, and they'll know me face to face. So when I move back or go anywhere else mm -hmm. and I'm like reaching out to them, hey, I know this position is for an in-house person, but would you mind me, you know, working on it as a freelance artist? Mm -hmm. And they've met me. They know that I can do this stuff through their pipeline. Right. And they're comfortable mm -hmm. with that. So, Would something like Nickelodeon uh, be kind of your target uh, for the type of studio that you'd like to work with? Yeah, um, Nickelodeon, DreamWorks. Um, I actually got an offer from, from DreamWorks as a background painter. Really? But... They weren't, like, I think they asked me, was I willing to move out there? Right. When I said yes, but oh. I would need assistance. So that during that time when they were, it was actually during the time they were about to, going through that whole, like, being brought by, I forgot who, who oh, brought who, them. They they just got purchased by someone who or, or merged with someone, and I can't was remember it who it was. I, I don't recall offhand. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to have to look that up. But it was, it, it was during that time. Right. So eventually because it was like a lot of time was going in between our communication so um once i reached back and followed up with them like i, I found out that they had gone with somebody else that was probably already there in california right. or willing to just up and move yeah uh, and a lot of people would recently i've been realizing that i don't need to be in a rush to try to get into an animation studio because i'm kind of already doing that stuff now mm -hmm. and just knowing that Technology has advanced so much to the point that I can, I can learn most of what I would learn in the studio mm -hmm. from online. Mm -hmm. um, and just being in the studio is just more building personal relationships. Mm -hmm. But yeah, like if you put it when you put it that way, like I'm kind of already doing or forming or forging <laughs> um, my own dream job, pretty much like right now. So. It's it's pretty exciting. It's um, it's scary at times. Oh, um, yeah. mm -hmm. Tell us about that. Scary part. I think the scariest experience I've had this year um, was when nothing. Like I had a shortage. My first shortage. Like I finished work that had came in, and of course during that time I was like, all right, cool, everything's going great, mm -hmm. bills being paid. Mm -hmm. Um, and then that last job ended and nothing was coming in. I was reaching out to people, nothing was coming in and bills were needing to be paid. Right. And my wife's check was coming in, but it was only handling a certain amount. You right. Know? Mm -hmm. So I was just like, okay. Um, I was getting antsy. And at that time I was just kind of like, I don't know if this is going to work. So you start questioning. Yeah. I was like, did I make the right decision? Um, do I need to go back to the studio? I love, um, will they even take me back? Um, yeah. They, so take, like, they take you back. <laughs> am I, am I, even, <laughs> am I even good enough? You know, um, I started questioning my ability to even draw. What? Yeah. So it, it was weird. It was a, a weird time okay now here's here's what i'm imagining <laughs> right now you've been spending too much time alone in a studio yeah. letting your mind letting your fears in your mind yeah. wander a little yeah. bit too much because I, I mean anybody who goes and takes a look at your uh at, at <laughs> stain com is going to see very quickly that you definitely know how to draw yeah it's it's, it's, <laughs> it's a mind thing it, it was, yeah. it, it it's was crazy what thing. that kind of that kind of fear and doubt will will do to you it'll start eating into every yeah. other part of your yeah your being and um, isolation and, and yeah. i know that you've been spending a lot of time alone in your studio and mm -hmm. as a matter of fact when i ran into you and asked you whether or not you'd be interested in doing this interview mm -hmm. uh, i believe you and uh, you had a friend who was yeah that was my um one of my mentors i would say but outside of art right yeah right and uh you know him from your fellowship at church yeah he said to me uh that your wife told him to come get you out of the house because you're spending too much time yeah. alone. And I mean, has that isolation been difficult to deal with? Cause I mean, you even said earlier that, you know, you used to really enjoy being able to just turn around and have a conversation with 
uh, with the people who are right there in, in yeah. the cubicle farm with you. Yeah. And so are you missing that? Yeah, just a little bit, especially when, because I don't know, like for you guys, like when I'm on a project, I can zone in on it and the world doesn't exist around me. Mm -hmm. But then when I need to take a break and step back from it, mm -hmm. And I just don't feel like drawing or doing anything. You can watch only so much cartoons, you know, um, <laughs> or read a book or something like that mm -hmm. until you're like, okay, I I need to go, you know, talk to somebody. And it's funny because, like, it's weird. Like, my wife would come home sometimes and I'll still be working. And when I'm in my zoned out phase, I'm like, okay, like, don't talk to me right now. Like, I'm trying to right. focus in and hone in on what I'm doing. But then when I finish, it's like, all right, cool. So what's going on? Like, you know, we're playing around. So it was awesome to do that. And I had that at the studio. Like right. everybody was zoned out doing their thing. But then when everybody wanted to take a break or I just kind of wanted to walk around mm -hmm. and watch someone else drawing mm -hmm. um, or talk to somebody else, like I was able to do that. So. One of the great benefits about working in a studio full of people yeah. is is you learn yeah. from those other people. I know that for, for me, before I moved to Georgia, I was self-employed for not even a full year. But financially and professionally, it was great. Personally, it was kind of a disaster. <laughs> and mostly because I was sitting at home alone yeah. day after day. Um, to the point where I've said if I ever be, you know, become self-employed again or, or just focus on freelance or anything, I'm going to have to find a place to do it where there are other people. Because just, like I said, even if you're not working together on the same things. Just just having someone else there that you can say, hey, what, what are you doing? Yeah. And just get your mind off your own thing and kind of clear your head. That's that's so important. Mm -hmm. um, even to the point where when I was in school or when I was doing uh, freelance work, most of that work was done at you know, Starbucks or Panera Bread or you know somewhere that has free Wi-Fi and will let you sit there for six yeah. hours. You know, and, and half of that was just, no, it wasn't, it, I wasn't, I didn't need the, the food or the drink or whatever. I just didn't want to be alone. Yeah. Do you ever do that, Darnell? Do you jump in the car and, and run somewhere and be around other people? That's that's the funny thing. Uh -oh. We share one car. Uh. So <laughs> oh. that's why when you saw me that time, he came and picked me up. So that's that's the only way that I can like go to different places. And I've thought about doing that. Like because to just hear people talking behind you or around you, that's kinda all I really You're need. Being around you people. Know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So just sitting, sitting in a silent apartment, it gets pretty lonely yeah. at a certain point. So it does make you a little yeah. stir crazy. Yeah. 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 That's also the reason, by the way, why I, I bought a laptop and not a desktop. True. I mean, you, you pay a premium for a laptop, but then I can get up and go somewhere. Yeah. I'm not stuck at my own desk, you True. know. It's True. And also it's healthy. I would say it helps creatively because I felt like at a point I couldn't think of anything to do just original, like, stuff that I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. It was like, I finished my client work, now let's work on some some of my own stuff. And I was just like... You were drawing a blank? Yeah. I, know. I was like, I don't know what to, to draw or what to create. So I would watch cartoons. But then when I started doing my personal stuff, it would be based off of what I just watched. Right. So I was like, all right, I need to get out and, like, yeah. just experience life because then yeah. I can pull from the interactions or things that I'm experiencing by just going to the grocery store or driving a car mm -hmm. and seeing somebody in another car, like jamming out just like mm. some music or something like that. I, I know that you're, you're, um, I wouldn't say that you're a fitness buff, but you mm -hmm. do uh, a lot of physical activity or at least you used to. Uh, yeah. Is that something that helps out with us with, with going stir crazy? Do you get up and do some push ups or go play basketball? What do you do? Well, I've I've started to do that. Well, I, I think earlier on, I was so drawn to just being at my computer. Um, mm -hmm. But now I've started to kind of get up, um, walk around, started to drink a lot of water so that I would have to get up. Oh, <laughs> interesting. It's a nice um, little uh, life hack. <laughs> yeah. I would have to get up to, you know, go use the bathroom. And then I will just probably go grab some snack or something. Or I would just like go out on my porch. Or mm -hmm. something like that. Or I'll just hit like 10 push-ups and then get back up mm -hmm. and sit in the chair. Mm -hmm. um, just to get up from the chair. Because mm -hmm. um, I can easily just be there, there for like really? six hours straight. Wow. And That's like, focus, man. And like just be sitting there drawing, switch. All right, watch a little clip from something. All right, 
go back to drawing. And, like, I can easily be right there. Because uh-huh. everything is kind of, like, in arm's reach. Right. And I don't have to get up for anything unless I needed to eat or get something to drink or use the bathroom. So Right. So, wow, that's, I mean, that's great focus. Yeah. It's um, a gift and a curse. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, I know. And w- when I get truly focused at work, uh, I'll, I'll find that I'm in severe pain and I didn't even know it. The reason being because I, I drank too much soda, you know, and next thing you know, I'm, I'm having to run to the bathroom really quick. And it's, it's like, holy crap. It's because you're on a different plane mentally. You're not, you're not thinking about the physical world when you're doing that because you're so lost in your, in your creative side of your brain. Yeah. It was like one experience I had. Um, and this was just on a, a art test. Oh, yeah? <laughs> so I was doing this art test until 4 o'clock in the morning. Holy cow. After I finished my client work. I wasn't eating all the way up to that point because I was just so zoned that I got to get this done. I got to finish this. And I can just feel my body like giving out. Mm-hmm. Oh, man, I was like blacking out and then coming back. <laughs> and I was like, I got to get it done. I got to get it done. And like after I got it done, I didn't get the job because when I, and I know why, because when I looked at what I did afterwards, it was garbage. It was oh, crap. wow. Because um, I wasn't there. I was trying to get it done. And mm-hmm. whatever I could do to get it done, that's what I did. Right. And I could barely make make it to the bed. Oh, wow. Like, I was holding on to the walls and stuff. Yeah. And I was like, I'm not going to do that. That's, I, a, that's a life lesson. Ever again. <laughs> it, right it, it really yeah, is. And, and honestly, when, when uh, it reminds me of when you're in school, uh, anybody who's been to art school knows that it can be one of the hardest things that you ever do. When I got out of grad school where I was sleeping, if I was lucky, four hours a night for weeks on end, mm-hmm. um, I went right to teaching art. So I was also freelancing at the same time. And it's that feast or famine thing that happens when you're a freelancer or a part-timer. You, you never know when it's going to dry up. And so when it's good, you take everything you possibly can. And unfortunately, I learned the hard way, um, not so hard way, but I learned kind of the hard way just how much of a toll that can take on you. Because I was getting up sometimes at eight o'clock in the morning or more, more to the point, I was actually starting classes at eight o'clock in the morning to teach. And then I was being up until four in the morning working on client work. And then, you know, rinse, repeat. I was, I was doing that day after day. And, um, and I, I, I burnt out pretty hard. Um, but it really took its toll. And there were, there was way more than one time when I, I did that, um, zombie walk, to the bed at four o'clock in the morning when I, yeah. I didn't even know how I, I made it. I, I was like, I'm just going to sleep here in the hallway, <laughs> you know? And, and as a freelancer, sometimes, sometimes it's unfortunately necessary, isn't it? And that's what I'm still trying to figure out. Yeah. Um, because some jobs may pay a small amount and you know that you can't just do that, mm-hmm. that one job alone. So I've been bringing on two or three or more jobs, mm-hmm. but I've narrowed it down to just three max, no matter how much, all three pay because I've learned that my quality is going to speak more for me than the amount of work that I'm doing, the quantity that I'm doing. Because if I'm just doing a whole bunch of work and it's crap, I'll still be in a position of trying to track down work Mm -hmm. instead of doing quality work and then finding another job later on. But then now that quality piece that I did is actually out there hunting for me because Ah. people are (laughs) like, oh, who did this? Oh, um, so and so did this for me, and then they'll reach out to me. That's so a, that's what I'm trying to. That's a really smart way of, of looking at that. Yeah, uh, the quality work that you do is your resume. It's out yeah. there. Mm-hmm. It's out there doing the job hunt for you. Yeah. Um, oh, sure. Yeah. I mean, uh, uh, most creative industries are are surprisingly small when you get right down to it, yeah. and people have a tendency to move around and float company to company. And if you start turning in bad work, you never know if the next company that was going to give you work is going to see that and go, never mind, you know, because yeah. this guy's clearly not worth it. Even yeah. if that was the one time you did something, he just phoned it in. So it's probably really smart to, rather than just say, I'm going to do all the work. Because no, I'm going to do this much, but it's going to be good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's great. And it's so hard. It's so hard yeah, it to turn is. down work. It is. It's also, for me, it's a, a faith thing. Because if I was blessed to get the work that I got now, for me to just trust that God's going to provide me with something else. And also, if you do something really good, 
Like, it's going to lead to something else. Because they're not going to just hire somebody that does, oh, well, he did all of this, but was it good? Like, did he do a good job on it? And if not, then they're probably, you know, they're not going to contact you. That's something that I thought about and considered even with my own personal work. Like, I could just try to throw every and anything out there on my blogs or my Instagram or whatnot, but is it something I'm comfortable with putting up? Mm-hmm. knowing that that's going to be the face of me pretty much. Right. So it, I, I've kind of struggled with how to curate my own art presence online as well. Mm-hmm. And I'm starting to realize that I have not necessarily done the best job of that myself. So uh, that's something I'm going to be working on a lot over the next year myself. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that I, I see the value in uh, being a personal curator of your own mm-hmm. work and making absolutely certain yeah. that you're putting work out there that is hunting for work for you. Because you know, you're only as, you're only as good as your your weakest piece. You yeah. hear that a lot. That's the advice that gets thrown at uh, people putting like mostly students putting together portfolios. And still, you know, you go to like went to Siege this past year and people are showing you their portfolios or you look up their website and you're like, well, these these five things are great, but the other ten clearly were earlier pieces or pieces yeah. you just kind of phoned in. And most people at that point you're not in a position to ask them, but if you can, most of them answer something like, oh, I just didn't feel good enough. It doesn't matter because, because <laughs> they're going to look at that and go, oh, oh, he's, he's hit or miss. Yeah. You know? right. And that's, that's not what you want. You want to, you want to go, I'm awesome all the time. Here's four things that prove it. <laughs> right. That's enough. Yeah. Right. right. Rather than trying to put 10 or 15 iffy things on there, five or 10 really good things. That's yeah. what you want. And, and you're not there to explain, oh, oh, this was a rush job or, oh, this was this, or this is something that wasn't, you know, they're just going to look at it and judge you, yeah. which is unfortunate, but yeah, that's how it goes. Mm-hmm. I guess when it comes to promoting work and stuff like that, like I've been blessed to have a wife that she's a digital marketer. So she's been doing a lot of that for me now and just kind of giving me the ins and outs on just trying to use social media to promote, you know, my art and just to get it out there. She's been really good and supportive. I think that's another important thing, too. Just having a wife that's supportive, that she's been a great help with me when it comes to that because she will see, okay, he's passionate about this. Like mm-hmm. He's literally putting his blood, sweat, and tears into this. Like He's barely <laughs> sleeping and stuff like that. So she's been really supportive and um, loving over me for that. So I just wanted to give her a shout-out for that. <laughs> yeah. Sounds like she deserves him, a yeah, shout-out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and having that support network in place is really important. Uh, you 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 have way too much of society who still thinks that uh, uh, being a professional artist, uh, especially freelance, is a pipe dream. And yeah. yet, if you have a good support system in place that that knows and believes in what you're trying to do, uh, it can propel you in a way yeah. that that otherwise you you may not have. You know? Yeah, exactly. So for the second half, we do want to talk a little bit about what got you there, what got you to your skill set and that sort of thing. Do you want to backtrack all the way to childhood or, or do can, you want to talk? I can go there. I think it makes sense to at least start with a question like what, what was it that inspired you to pursue art in the first place? There's the question. Um, I would say I think I saw my dad draw. Was he an artist? No, he wasn't. <laughs> But he drew something. I forgot exactly what he drew. But my mom said that I tried to copy it. Mm -hmm. And I got pretty close to what he was drawing. How old were you? Probably like three or four, I would say. So, I mean, that was your very first memory of ever being interested in art? From what she told me. Ah. From what she told me. It all started when I was in elementary. I wanted to be an astronaut. Oh wow! I think about it. Yeah. Wait. Uh, where were you? Where were you going to school? I was in. Um, I was going to Perrin Elementary. I think it was. And this is where in Miami. Okay, Miami, Florida. You're from Miami. Yeah. So from Miami, um, born and raised on uh, Richmond Heights, mm-hmm. three hundred five. Okay, to say that. But yeah, it was in elementary school, and my teacher saw that I had potential, and she reached out to my mom and told her, "Hey, like, I think you should do something about this." Really? So my mom was like, okay. We we weren't making a lot of money and stuff. She wasn't making a lot of money and stuff like that. So she wanted to invest in all of our futures. So I was kind of like the the gimme pig that my two sisters were able to kind of follow underneath um, pretty much. Were, were you the oldest? I was the oldest, okay. yeah. And so h- how many? It's two sisters. That Okay, just you and two yeah. sisters. Okay. 
she enrolled me into a magnet elementary school. And ever since then, I've been in just magnet schools all the way up to college. And art has been from a young age, like my main focus. Mm-hmm. Wait, um, so it was it was the magnet school actually focused on on art, or was it all like the a- arts? It was like music, dance, drama, huh. everything. And when I was in elementary school, I did all of that. Like I played the cello. I was, now I'm imagining you <laughs> in a tutu. Do, oh, uh, doing. I cut I cut out on that because <laughs> like I was in dance and I was good according to my teacher. Uh-huh. So she wanted me to be in a recital, uh-huh. and I was like, okay, I'll do it. And she was like, "Well, you're gonna be wearing this," and I and I went through the practices and everything. When she told me what I was wearing, I was like, "No, I'm not doing it." <laughs> just like we, you can't just cut out on like two days before the show. I was like, "Yes, I can. I'm not uh, wearing." That. <laughs> you should have told me about the uniform in advance. <laughs> exactly. So, how old wow. were you? I was. I don't. I can't even remember how old I was. Is when this that like, happened, like middle school, high school, it's like elementary, pretty much. Oh, okay, so still, still elementary. Still like, so you're still very young. Yeah, and where I'm doing drama classes, I'm playing the cello. Wow, I'm in all the arts. So I guess much. I guess that answers the question of whether your parents were supportive. Yeah, my mom was really really supportive. Um, my dad, he I don't really remember him like pushing me to do so much in the art because um, eventually they. They split, and she was just raising us alone. So she was just super supportive of all three of us. And mm. it was one thing also that pushed me to start working on my own stuff at a young age. My art teacher in elementary school was like, why won't you stop drawing Spider-Man and all these other superheroes and create your own? So that got the wheels turning. I was like, so how mm. do I create my own characters? And I would just try to come up with stuff and it just wasn't working. And I started doing my own comics. Um, I would get comic books not to read them, but to just look at art. Like I never really like read comics. But oh, really? I had a whole bunch of comics that I just looked at art. And it, now were you into comics prior to this? I mean, obviously if you were drawing Spider-Man and stuff like that, I mean, mm-hmm. were you into comics or did you just like the look of the characters? I just liked the look of the characters. Uh-huh. Like, I never really read comics. Oh, okay. So I had, like, X-Men comics. I had Witchblade comics. I had... 90s, right? Yeah, all, like, old comics. I still have them now, kind of. So, <laughs> and I drew based off of what I saw in there. So I created, like, my own little superheroes. And I was staying with my grandfather at the time, and... His next door neighbor, she had a a son or a nephew or whatever. He was an artist too, and he was drawing his own characters. And I would watch him draw his characters, and from that, like I started to like design my own characters at a young age, come up with storylines, and do like comics, like little short comic strips. D- do you still have any of these? I think so. Yeah, I kept all of my sketchbooks. Do you have any of it scanned? I was going to say, is, nope. there any, is there any chance we could we could see some of that? None of it. Include it with the uh, the show notes. Or none whatever? of it's Just, scanned, but I can scan some of it in. If, if there's anything you're, yeah. you'd be willing to share, that'd be great. Yeah, I'm. I'm not like, oh, I they can't see, you know, right? How I, where I came from. I'm pretty proud of where I came from because that allows me to see um, just my growth. It's it's exciting whenever I look back and I'm like, oh, all right, cool, I got. I got a lot better than oh yeah where I was before. Yeah, that's always gratifying. I, yeah. I've always liked seeing the the really early things that artists do because most of them, not all of them, but most of them started out they're just they're just childish you know they're kids drawings yeah and it, you know it shows you if, if you work at it and you're passionate about it you know you can start where everyone else started and then end up where you actually want to be yeah. I think we left off. You were in elementary. magnet school in, yeah. in elementary. How long were you in that school? How many years? It was weird because every level I went into it was kind of like I was auditioning to get into a college but it was just middle school and elementary school mm-hmm. that's how kind of like what 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 did the auditions entail and drawing a still life mm-hmm. seeing how and just seeing where your skill level was mm-hmm. so, so you didn't have to draw that pirate turtle no <laughs> those commercials yeah okay. I, I've drawn the, the pirate turtle before <laughs> yeah my brother and I both did it was it wasn't anything like that it was more like you know, just trying to see how you perceive light and color and stuff Sounds like so that. Sounds so serious for a kid. It, yeah, it it was, but like I was just like, oh, cool. Yeah, I'm drawing, doing, and it was interesting to see how 
everybody else. Because at that time, I was seeing how there were other people that did what I did. Like, they drew, and they were good. Like, there were other good people. And I was like, oh, so that's how you drew that. Okay. This whole concept, this is just mind-blowing to me. You were doing art auditions to get into each year of school. Yeah. Well, each, like, yeah, pretty much. Whenever I went to, like, different levels of school. So middle school, I had to do another art test to get into that school. Okay, so not each year, but each, each transition yeah. from school to school. Okay. Yeah, so, like, um, middle school was a whole nother like, level I had. I think I had, like, two different teachers. And then even within that, I was learning how to sculpt. Like, I was doing, like, all this different types of stuff, using pastels, you know, paintings, all that stuff. So I was exposed to that stuff when I was, like, young, super young. I'm, I'm super jealous. I, I like, want to cry right now. I, I mean, like, where was my magnet school as a kid? <laughs> I mean, I had the art supplies, but I didn't have anyone there to teach me how to use them. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I was, it was a... A blessing to be able to experience that, and my mom to take the initiative to to make sure that you got yeah. that opportunity. Well, geez, yeah. I mean, good good for her for for seeing that potential and and yeah. just just letting you run with it. Man. Yeah, that's even when when I wanted to be an astronaut too. I went to space camp. So <laughs> oh wow, that was oh, awesome. Where in um Titusville, Florida, I think it was. Oh okay, yeah. So yeah. that was that was awesome. That was fun, and um. I still kind of jealous. Secret, <laughs> secretly would like to be an astronaut. Still, yeah, but um, like, well, there's your subject matter. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But I, I like to look at it as I'm still trying to reach beyond, but just from an artist's point of view now, like I'm still okay. reaching beyond just the sky. You know, just trying to think of new and, and exciting, um, new worlds and create those worlds through art instead of mm. exploring them as an astronaut. So. I see. Yeah. The, the uh, uh, inner inner space versus outer space yeah. is what a lot of people think of. Inner space me- meaning the inside of, of your imagination. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Trying to explore that. So um, so middle school was a kind of a magnet school, you said, and you were definitely still doing a lot of art. Were you still yeah. doing performance work as well and, and doing instruments? or um, No, it kind of just narrowed down to just art. Mm-hmm. alone because with um elementary they exposed us to everything and i think after i left they narrowed it down for them to only pick one thing mm-hmm. um so when i got to middle school it was just only art and i was being taught by two different art teachers mm-hmm. again there i was kind of like surrounded by people that were good some people that were not you know so good so it was a good mix and i just kept growing Every time I saw somebody that was better than me or You'd reach for they it. had something that I wanted to, you know, get to, like I'll just I'll become good friends with them or I'll just study like what they're they're doing and how they're doing it. Yeah. That was always one of my uh, pieces of advice when I was um getting close to graduating from, you know, with an art degree and you had new students coming in. It's like even if you're not a not a competitive person, because I, I never was until I went back to high school or met back to college rather. And something if a switch flipped in me and all of a sudden I just wanted to destroy everyone else in the room. But but with art, not literally. <laughs> So the advice was, you know, try to be the best person in the room. And if you're not, become friends with whoever is and figure out what they're doing and, and learn from them because they clearly have something to teach you. Yeah. So that's that's pretty much what I did, even in high school. High school was awesome because I, I started off in art. Like first year I did that, um, again, like I was learning how to use um, linoleum carving from printmaking. We did that. Every type of art making imaginable, we did. And then they had a photography department. So this is around the time I got introduced to Photoshop and the Wacom. Give me an idea of time frame here. Was this late 90s, early 90s, when you were in high school? early 2000s. What year did you start college? 2005. 2005. Okay. Wow. Um, We actually had somebody visit from different schools and I found that I can get into the animation industry and I can make money doing art. So that was another like light bulb moment for me. Wait, so prior to this, you did not I know, didn't know that there were jobs in animation? At all. Oh, that's very different from some of the other people that we've um, done interviews with now. Who I didn't know how to barrier. get there. I didn't know how to get there. I knew they existed. Like yep. I watched Disney movies and stuff. I saw the credits. And I yeah. just didn't know how to get into it. Okay. 
because I, I was I again on the East Coast. I still don't. I'm trying to learn this from you right now. <laughs> <laughs> I was on the East Coast, and everything was in California pretty much at that time. Right. But I, I learned that, oh, different departments, like there's a character designer, there's people who did visual development before they actually drew the stuff that moves. And so I was learning all that around mm-hmm. that time um, while learning Photoshop on top of that, too. So I think high school was like that big moment for me, that light, light bulb moment on what I wanted to do as far as, you know, as an artist. So senior year came around. I did like an art foundation program. Mm -hmm. It was a program like in Colorado Springs. Um, Just artists from all over the country came to there. They would just select like one or two people that represented the school, the entire school in the art department. Mm -hmm. And um, I got picked and I was just, that was another like level up moment for me. Like I was surrounded by like some of the best artists in the country that were there. And I just learned from them. I was just like, okay, this is awesome. I'm not... The best, because it was kind of like I had become the best in high school, but then I wasn't growing anymore. I was just kind of like mm-hmm. doing my own thing. So when I went to that, I was like, oh, all right, more people that are better than me. So it's time to absorb again. And were, were, did you like it when that happened? Or were you excited by it or were you crestfallen by it? Uh, uh, different artists have different responses to that situation when they discover that there are people their own age even who are way better than they are, you know? Yeah, um, I think at that age, I wasn't, like, at first I was like, dang, he's better than me. I don't know I want to get there. I got a whole week to. So <laughs> <laughs> so I was just, and I was just picking up stuff from different people. Everybody was motivating each other. Well, after that was said and done, I'm just kind of, like, fast forward a little bit. Like, one of the kids there, his name was Abdi. He was on a show called, it was a reality TV series with artists. I don't know if you ever seen it. I forgot the name of it. What it was oh, like? Oh, uh, work of art. Yeah, the next he great won. The was black the, kid that won. I was gonna say he was in the second to last challenge. He did that drawing of himself out of dirt, and he's floating. Dude, that guy, that guy was amazing. That yes. just for that one drawing, I was exactly after he did that piece. Like, oh, he, he should win. I knew he. He's actually he's amazing. He's an artist. Yeah, and he was wow. he was in that program with me in Colorado. Wow. So like when I saw him on TV, because before. We all left. He was like, hey, I want to see each and every one of you guys either on TV or doing something huge. And he just, that kind of lit a fire under me. So when I saw him on TV, I was like, yo, I know him. Uh huh. And he won. I was like, this is awesome. Like, that just fired me up even more. And like, his work is still like bananas. Like, I look at it now, like the piece you were talking about. Mm-hmm. I was just like, yo. Like this is crazy. Like compared to everybody else's work that was on that show. I mean, like, there was there were some awesome. good artists there, but that one piece stands out from the entire show as just gorgeous. Yeah, it was awesome, and he's a cool, cool dude. Like his personality is is awesome. So I, I was really happy for him. But like people like that helps me as an artist to to grow more. And like, all right, there's a new level I can reach. Nice. Um, so now I battle with that sometimes. Like, I'll probably see somebody that's, like, super. Like, I don't even know if I can make it to that ability to be able to create art like he's making. So I'll start questioning myself. But then it won't last that long. It'll be like, okay, I have a different voice. And how I create art is different from what he does. Mm -hmm. So even though, like, he's on another level in my head, let me just focus on what I'm strong at. Mm -hmm. And then I'll just snap back into, all right level up from just looking at what he's doing to inspire what I'm doing. So it sounds like a great way to kind of challenge yourself and, and continue to be inspired, which I mean, if you're using it in that way, that's, that's a very good way to use it. I do want to move on and talk about how you decided to go to the college that you decided to go to, why, and then talk a little bit about your experience in the program that you chose to, to take. I only actually applied to only art schools. Mm-hmm. So I didn't apply to any regular universities. And my mom already knew I wasn't going to do that. I chose, I actually wanted to go to Art Center okay, in California, but yeah. they didn't give me a huge enough. That's, that was, well, sorry, I'm making a face <laughs> over here. I'm like, who doesn't want to go to Art Center in California? <laughs> That's where I wanted to go, but 
So I ended up going to Atlanta College of Art and Design because they literally almost gave me a full ride mm -hmm. um, to go there. And it was a small little school, you know, within the Woodrow Art Center. Right. How many students? And that was here in Atlanta. How many students were going at the time? I remember it was a very small It number. was small. Um, I know my class size wasn't that big. It was probably about four or five kids wow. in a wow. class, um, I would say. Wow. It was very intimate. Like, teacher would be able to go around to each person and kind of, like, help them with whatever project they were working on and stuff like that. Then SCAD came. Um, and how long were you at, what was it, a AC? Yeah, ACA, so ACA. Atlanta College of Art. How long were you there before SCAD and ACA, did they merged, but essentially SCAD bought them, I think? It was literally the orientation. Whoa, <laughs> they so were, not they, long. They dropped the news on everybody during the orientation that SCAD was coming in to eventually buy ACA out. But but it sounds like you had some We had a year. At, okay. A year, pretty much, before they made the full transition. So uh -huh. I actually went to 24-hour, um, I think it was 24-hour comics that SCAD did. Right. I went to that for the first time while I was still at ACA. Uh -huh. So I met David, um, David Bonilla, Bonilla. Yeah. and Sean Crystal. Right. And Pat Quinn for the first time. And what year was this? That was 2005. Five, yeah. So I met them there, um, and that kind of helped me to be okay with transitioning into SCAD because I was like, like, I don't know what SCAD is about. SCAD is new. Right. And I, I know that there was a lot of trepidation and, and, and a lot of fear about the changeover from ACA to SCAD. I'm glad to hear that it, it sounds like you ended up being pr pretty cool with the whole transition, but how did your scholarship hold up once you got into SCAD? It didn't even cover half of it. Yep. So mm. I was just like, yeah. It, it, did you feel trapped during that situation? Uh, kind of. Yeah, because I was like, I can't go to another school, and I have no choice but to just stick it out. Go to Sky because mm -hmm. they're buying the school that I right. made it into. So right. I think after the year, that one year, um, I started taking things into my own hand, pretty much. Because I I went into SCAD as an illustration major. Right. That's where I started. Still with the intentions of going into <laughs> visual development for animation or concept art for games and stuff like that. That was still my mindset, but. At the time, there were no classes being taught on that. So illustration was like the next, you know, best thing. I had already met um, Sean Crystal. So right. he knew of me right. before I even, you know, started going to school officially. He was asking me, like, so, like, what do you want to do, like, eventually? And I was telling him what I want to do. And he was like, well, you know. Hold on. I'm, I'm so sorry, but I, I got to backtrack just a bit. He was coming over to the ACA building. No, no, no. SCAD. I was at SCAD was, at that time. So he's poaching illustration students. <laughs> Sean, we're going to have to have a talk. I was kidding. at SCAD at that time. And I think the sequential department was right next, like right down the um, hallway. So right. it wasn't too far away. So I guess in between classes, when I was in class, he wasn't teaching, I think. So he would kind of linger. And he saw me in there. So he just, you know, just catching up. And I was telling him, you know, certain things I wanted to learn. And he was like, well, you know, if you take sequential, <laughs> you can learn perspective. You can learn how to story tell. You can learn how to storyboarding. Story, yeah, all yeah. that stuff. So I was like, hmm, okay, I'll think about it. Mm -hmm. He was like, and also, you know, we're just playing around with, you know, Photoshop. and Let me, let me interject for just a second. We're talking about Sean Crystal a lot. He was the... Um, uh, what do they call it? Associate chair of the sequential art department at SCAD mm -hmm. Atlanta at the time. Yeah. Okay. Just sorry. Just for some context there. Yeah. Yeah. I eventually, I think, switched over to sequential. Mm -hmm. And that's when Nolan came in. And so they, you were there before Nolan was there. Yeah. Oh, okay. Nolan Woodard, uh, prolific, prolific color artist for comic books. Just look up Nolan Woodard, W O O D A R D. The, the guy is, uh, he's a beast. He is amazing. And he was a professor at the uh, sequential art department mm -hmm. at SCAD Atlanta when both myself and Darnell were going there. Yeah. So, sorry, right, go ahead. <laughs> but yeah, it was, it, that wasn't there. Right. When I, when I got there. So I started showing interest along with other students like David and um, 
like my god brother um brandon that was there and they went and got a teacher so once he came in and we started doing concept design classes and i was just learning a lot from just sequential art period Mm -hmm. how to tell a story with um images so when you entered the sequential art department your intent was never to do comics no you were never interested in that I didn't want to do comics. I, my mind was concept art and right. visual development for animation and like games and stuff. And in effect, those conversations that you had with Sean kind of led to what eventually became, I believe, a, a concept art minor in the sequential art department uh, mm-hmm. in Atlanta. Savannah had it first, though. They had a full blown like visual development and Savannah concept. did. Yeah. Okay. So I kind of Frankensteined. <laughs> my Education. curriculum pretty much yeah because i was teaching myself outside of class and plus i was taking animation courses right so i was taking storyboarding for animation and one thing that i learned to not just um like i, I realized that the classes we were taking were more of an introduction mm-hmm. instead of just okay i'm just gonna do the class work and that's it like i would literally be in my room like practicing what i learned and then practicing stuff that I wasn't being taught right. in class. And because, most good yeah. students do. So I started doing that. Yeah. Like people were out, hey, we're going to this party. I was like, eh, I'll be on the computer, Photoshop, mm-hmm. painting. Mm-hmm. And I was horrible at that time. <laughs> now that I look back at what I did. <laughs> I remember what you were doing in 2007 and forward. Of course, I didn't start school until 2007 there. Mm-hmm. And um, I think you graduated the year before. 2010. No, that's the same year I graduated. Yeah. So, but of course, I came in as a grad student, and I did it in just under three years. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, I remember seeing that stuff, and at the time, uh, of course, digital painting wise, you were so far advanced compared to where I was with it because I had just mm-hmm. started that I was gaga looking at your work, <laughs> and I was very inspired by it. Oh, so. cool, cool. And once again, I was like, let me just kind of surround myself with mm-hmm. people that are doing what I want to do, mm-hmm. especially Nola, like. Just this, he was, it was no joke when it came to his class trying to do the work from like what he would have us do as far as like assignments and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And he didn't call them assignments, he called them jobs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He he came at it as a professional, like I was actually in the field doing right, doing the actual stuff like creating right. storyboards. And, and he stuff, expected so. everybody to to follow suit. You yeah, know, which which is very yeah. good. So like that, that was a a good. Um, development for me, I would say, um, as far as like professionalism. Um, but yeah, um, so college was was good for me. Just being able to kind of just flex my wings a little bit, learn a little bit more of what exactly I want to be doing mm-hmm. um, with my art. Um, and even at that time, I wanted to finish college and go out to Cali. Right, um, but it didn't. It didn't work out that way. Now, is that is that because you met your now wife, or I mean, what what made you decide not to go out to California? Well, it wasn't that. It was more of financials. I ended up coming back home, staying with my mom for for like three months. Was she still in Miami? No, she actually moved to Georgia. Oh, okay. um, she was in Macon, Georgia, at the time. Mm-hmm. So, and I was like, all right, well. I have to try to get some type of money together or get a job to get out to Cali. Mm -hmm. And during this time where, I mean, okay, you're done with school, you're living with your mother in Macon, Mm -hmm. and were you also in a full bore uh, job hunt at that time? Is that what you were doing? Yeah, I was freelancing Mm -hmm. at that time and just working on personal stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, So they weren't like huge freelance gigs, um, but my mom, again, was supportive. Like I didn't have to pay rent. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I didn't have to help pay utilities, so I really wasn't. I didn't have a job at all. Right. Cadillac Jack contacted me through the work they saw on Scad's um, sequential blog. Okay. They had. Uh, so, how long after you graduated college did did this opportunity come along? Um, three months. Three months after. Okay. I would say it was a uh, three months of like. And you weren't even actively looking for a studio position. Not here. Yeah. I was mostly only applying to California studios. Did you even know that such a job 
existed or such a company existed or even the whole industry. Not at all. Yeah, neither did I. Not before Not you all. got the job. <laughs> yeah. And then I think that... I referred you to them. Well, no, but I mean, it, that was that was like years later. Yeah, yeah. That, that is a, a really common thing that I, I don't know if anyone who works there ever yeah, went, you know, I, I want to, <laughs> I want to work in a casino art. Right. And that's kind of what I was getting at. It's like probably some of the game designers and mathematicians, but they seem like the only ones who might have had an inkling that this existed prior yeah. to. Right. You know, most of our designers, graphic designers and uh, digital artists and 3D artists, when when they went to school, they didn't even know such a, an industry existed. Yeah. And you were there for six years. Yeah. And. And if you're comparing that to AAA gaming, six six years for an artist is an unheard of run at, at a <laughs> oh, single company in a single position. Or really good point. Single department. Yeah. yeah. So let's talk about the early years just really quick. I, I know that you've got something you've got to get off to uh, here pretty soon, but mm-hmm. just really quick, let's talk about the early years. I mean, you had a good time in the beginning. Yeah, it was good. Um, coming in, I was excited. That was my first like full-time real job. Because the only other job I actually had growing up was at an art store. Um, but most of the time I've been just freelancing since I was in high school, mm-hmm. airbrush shirts and stuff like that. So mm-hmm. when I came in for the interview with um, Enoch, I was like, hey, we're going to go ahead and take a chance with you. And like I was grinning from ear to ear pretty much. And um, and so was he because that's what he yeah. does. <laughs> yeah, he has a pretty big smile. Yeah, He's an awesome dude too. Yeah, um, So... When I got a job, I was like, yes. I was like, okay, cool. I'm going to get to to learn. Because before I came in, like, they toured me around. So I'm just looking at all the equipment and stuff that I don't have. So mm-hmm. I was like, I get to learn all this stuff. And some of the, the artists there, like, once again, I was in that, <laughs> that mindset of, like, I'm going to engulf everything that you know and just kind of right. level up from there. So I was excited about that. Um, working there. At the time, it was a small studio, so the potential was there to, like, learn other skill sets. And that mm-hmm. was another thing that I was excited about, too. Mm-hmm. And just being able to to grow and level up, being around other like-minded artists, being able, like I said, just to turn around and talk to other artists and, like, chill with them. And then the video games during lunchtime, that, <laughs> that was cool. Like, I, you know, never, I've heard stories about that. And that's kind of what gravitated me to like other animated studios, like for animation and stuff like that. But to see that at this studio, I was like, okay, cool. We get to play video games. I get to draw all day, mm-hmm. and um, it was awesome. So it was a it was a good time for me. And I guess just I started to want more, um, right. and that's when I started transitioning or wanting to transition out of you mm-hmm. know the studio. And I, I remember when I first called you and, and, and asked what you thought about working there, and you were still very, very excited about the work that you yeah. were doing. And I, I I understand that completely. I mean, when I first mm-hmm. got there, I was very, very excited about the kind of work yeah. that I was doing, and I still find a lot of enjoyment in it. Mm-hmm. Um, but at some point, you, you whether it be at one studio or another or freelance, you... you you crave, a spe- we're creators. We crave something different uh, often, you yeah. know. And and I think that's that's what everybody understood at work yeah. when you left. It's not that you were rejecting us. <laughs> <laughs> no, not at all, not at all. Yeah. So. Um, oh, and I also wanted to, when I first started with um, Cadillac Jack, I was also working on a book with Marvel at the time. Oh. Wait, that really? That was with Domo and Irene. Right, the right. Um, Deadpool family. Um, book. That's right. So, I'd forgotten that you were yeah. on that. So and I did a little bit of like mainstream comic stuff. So for a little bit. How did that come about for you? For me, it was like Sean called me up. He was like, "Axel is going to be at the school." Axel Alonso. Yeah, and yeah. I had already graduated, so he knew I wasn't like a big. I wanted to be in comics, like I wanted mm-hmm. to do animation and stuff like that. But he was like, "Hey, just come." I used for the cover cover work stuff to be like a cover artist. Just mm-hmm. put some some of your illustrations together. So I put some of my digital paintings together, came there. He wasn't too like, okay, these are great. But he was like, you got any sequential work? Mm-hmm. And that's when I showed them the pages I did. And then I got the call later um, along with Domo and um, Irene. And so you did some interior work. Yeah, interior work. So mm-hmm. I ended up doing um, 
being a part of it was like three of us on one book, right? And I handled the dog pool, um, dog pool, <laughs> yeah, dog pool <laughs> part of the book, um, which was pretty fun and um, it was a learning experience for me as well, and just awesome to be able to work with Marvel, and, you know, have that mm-hmm, experience. Mm-hmm. So I was doing that while I was working full time at um, Cadillac Jack. So it was some long nights. I'll bet. <laughs> Sounds like it. It was yeah. long nights. So, but yeah, so that was that was a cool experience and um, kind of like lived a little bit of my dream to work for like a company like like Marvel. So, right. This has all been great. Uh, yeah. What I want to ask is, first of all, two things, one at a time here. One. What kind of work do you want to do next? What is your dream work that you want to do? Um, I would say my dream work would be to produce like a short animated short or animated feature with a story that within my faith, pretty much, um, being the foundation of it, mm-hmm. um, to just influence um, kids to help them to see that um, even though the world is like you know dark and different areas like we may have certain issues that we face in life or whatnot just more of an encouragement but from a cool like standpoint kind of like anime mixed with like a disney type you know so just a mixture of all my influences um so So, it's still not not ambitious at all (laughs) <laughs> you want an anime disney faith-based encouraging feature length <laughs> yeah you know that's no problem well, just, we, just asked going him, up we asked him dream dream level right, right. Dream, you know so, shoot for the clouds here yeah so that's that's i want to be able to come out at least with if i can do it one time i'll be excited like mm-hmm. if i can make at least one feature that i've created it's able to transform young kids lives like i want to create work that speaks to them and that encourages them to know that they're capable of doing so much more than what the world says they're supposed to do like Mm. this is what you look like so you need to stay in this box find your purpose and stick in that and be comfortable within that instead of trying to achieve something that somebody else has but that's not necessarily who you are so that would be like a dream project to have my work speak in that way that sounds really really <laughs> inspirational and and it actually leads perfectly into my next question which is what kind of advice would you give to someone younger who's trying to get the kind of education and into the kind of work that you already have done and that you're trying to get into well it's a first of all it's a lot easier now is it <laughs> I would say um, you don't have to pay millions of, not millions, but thousands of dollars to learn what I've learned in, at SCAD. You can just literally learn it on online now. Okay. Um, so so you're, just just to be clear, are, are you, <laughs> w- w- would you say that, that a, a traditional, you know, college experience and all that is, is worthwhile? Is that what you're getting at? I would say it's not for everybody. Um, because you can go to a college and then not come out of it and not really have learned, you know, stuff because it's all about what you put into it that you get out of it. And that's kind of how I looked at college. That's why I did my own studying along with what they were teaching me Mm -hmm. because I knew it was just like the opening of the book. And I just need to keep going and learning for myself Mm -hmm. and growing. So I would just encourage young artists to find something that they're passionate about, have a story, because everybody has a story to tell, and be ambitious in learning the things that you want to know how to do. Like, if you do go to college, don't just settle there. Like, always keep trying to. So you're not saying to reject the things they're teaching. You're saying to take that and more. Yeah. Right. It goes back to what I've been saying, just absorbing from, (laughs) you know, everybody and everything. It's interesting. Each one of the people that we have interviewed now, there's one underlying theme that I've seen, no matter how, because each each person that we've talked to, they're male, female, different races, different backgrounds, Mm -hmm. being a self-starter and really hard worker Mm -hmm. and really inquisitive has been 
those have been qualities with each one of the successful artists and innovators that we've now done interviews with. Mm -hmm. And, and that's something that I think if you're going to be a successful artist, period, you have to have that, but you also have to have a way to learn things that you don't already know. Yeah. To me, to sum it all up, just be a sponge. (laughs) So, um, I think it's time to wrap this up. Uh, I think we've we've held on to you probably a lot longer than uh, we were allowed to today. <laughs> well, it's, it's been fun though, you know. Just I wasn't even paying any attention to the time flying by. It's been a great conversation. It so. has been a yeah. great conversation. Uh, thank you so much for sharing all this with us. I learned a lot. It, this keeps happening. I've known you uh, for quite some time, and yet I learned a ton new about you today. And mm-hmm. uh, and I think um, a lot of the information that you gave. Is uh, is stuff that a lot of young artists and young listeners, and probably parents of young listeners, are going to want to know about. <laughs> well, heck, I, I'm going to have to rethink my uh, LinkedIn strategy. I know, no <laughs> if kidding. Nothing else. I'm, I was. Uh, I'm also thinking about that that school experience that that you had. I mean, that's not even something I knew could so happen. Jealous. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> but uh, but thanks a lot. I think a lot of people are going to get thank a you. lot out of what you shared with us. And um, and I can't thank you enough. Right. Thank you for having me. Please join us on the first Monday in January for episode six of the Creator Forge podcast, where Jeremiah interviews yours truly, game artist and illustrator Pat Bolin in part two of Getting to Know Creator Forge. CreatorForge.com is still under construction, but please subscribe to this podcast on iTunes, SoundCloud, or wherever you find podcasts. You can follow Creator Forge on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and just about everywhere else on the web. Feel free to leave us comments and feedback on any of those locations. We would love to hear your thoughts and suggestions. If you enjoy our show, please consider supporting us on Patreon. This will help us cover the many costs associated with creating a podcast like equipment, hosting fees, and much, much more. Also, we will occasionally release additional podcast material that will only be available on Patreon. Have a wonderful holiday and a very happy new year. Thank you for your support and thanks for listening. Thank you.